When a user decides to visit a page that isn't part of our web server, we want to show them some sort of error message indicating that that page was not found. And I had this as an exercise that you could potentially try to do on your own because it's kind of similar to what we've been doing. But in this video, I actually want to walk through how I might go about doing it and teach a little bit about status codes along the way. So I believe we've looked a little bit at status codes when we were looking at this network stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and bring up the dev tools and show you again that if we look at a request, you can see there is a status code as part of the response. 200 OK is what we got here. So 200 is the most common one uh, because it's the one that comes back whenever everything loads correctly. Some other common ones might be um, 404, which is a status code that means that the page is not found. And then there's also the 500 status code, which is another fairly common one. It's a generic error that basically means that something went wrong on the server. And internal server error is what you'll usually hear it called. But whenever you see the 500 error, it's typically meant to indicate that your request wasn't, wasn't necessarily wrong, but something on the server happened unexpectedly or broke internally. A lot of times web servers will have different errors for whenever you send a bad request or bad data or something like that. So a 500 usually indicates that your data and everything was fine, but something messed up on the server. Now, things aren't always perfect, but that's a, a general way to describe it. There's also a bunch of status codes that are nonsensical. Uh, for instance, there's the 418 status code, which is, I'm a teapot. Obviously not very useful. Um, that was just an Easter egg that got snuck in there, I believe. And there's a bunch more. And then in general, people also sometimes do not sort of like custom status codes is the way I'd put it. So if you look at different APIs, like let me see if Stripe does it. If we go to the API, and if we look at, no, I don't want, I wish it didn't override the search. Um, Sometimes when we're looking at APIs, it isn't uncommon. Let me see if I can find this way. Okay, so here we go. It isn't uncommon for them to define certain errors um, on their own. So in this case, 409 is a conflict. Um, so they seem to have defined that to mean something specific in their case. Now, this one doesn't have a lot, but I've definitely seen APIs where they actually take a couple different 400 codes and they define them in their, their docs to mean different things like, okay, this had a bad request, like the data in this request was bad, or another one might mean some other type of error happened, like a rate limit error. So different ones will do different things at times. Usually you'll read the docs and they'll tell you what they are, but these are all just things the server can return. So typically status codes aren't something a user sees. You can see here that if I didn't have the dev tools up, I would never know I got a 200. That's not something that I as a user think about. But the browser and sometimes developer tools will actually look at a status code and use it for different reasons. So it's typically a good idea to send them back and, and to set them up correctly on your server. So we want to return a status code here in our code, or reset, reset a status code here in our code. So that's the first thing we need to figure out. How do we set a status code? Well, I'm going to go to the HTTP docs for Golang. And we're going to look at the response writer type and see if we can figure out how we might set a status code. And there's only three things here. There's the header, there's a write, and then there's a write header. And we'll see here the variable for this is named status code. So this looks like it's probably the right place. And if we read the docs, we'll find that this is actually how we set status codes. So from there, we want to decide okay, if we want to do this, we want to write a status code, do we just write 404 or like, what's the way we do that? What's the correct way? Another thing that I think is worth looking at when you come to a case in your situation like this is constants to see if there are any that might help you. And you'll notice here, if we start looking at constants in the HTTP package, there are ones for different methods like get, post, put, and different things like that. So that'll make it a little bit easier for us. So we don't have to type post every time. Um, I mean, technically it's going to take more typing to do method post, but the upside is we won't have a typo where we mix up the S and the O or anything like that. Um, and it's a little bit easier for people to sort of look through the code and, and, and traverse through it that way. For the status codes, it's going to be even better because you don't even necessarily have to know what the underlying code is. 
you just have to know what status you want. So you can see here we have status OK equals 200. And then if we look down here, we have status not found equals 404. So this is the one we probably want for when a page is not found. So going back to our code, we are going to do something like w.writeHeader, and we could just write 404 here, but instead I'm gonna write http.statusNotFound. And then we need to put some sort of message on the screen. So we could do something like fump.fprint w page not found. And that should potentially handle this for us. So let's go ahead and start our server or start it again and give that a test. So we want to go to something like dog slash cat that isn't defined and you'll see that we get a page not found error. And if we open up the network tab and refresh, we'll see that it's getting a status code of 404. And this shows up as red in the Chrome Dev Tools, indicating that it, you know, it was a bad request, which is another useful reason for sending back status codes. So that's doing what we want. Um, but another thing worth looking at is, is there some easier way to do this? And while I'd argue what I'm about to show you isn't necessarily easier, um, it's a common way to render errors. So if we go to the HTTP package and we go to the index, or here it is, the index, we'll see that there's also a function called error. And this takes in a response writer, an error string, and a code. And we can actually use this to do exactly what we just did, but just in a one-liner type version. So instead of doing um, write header and fprint, we could do something along the lines of um, http.error, w, and then here we can say page not found, and http.status not found is the status code we pass into that. And then we can get rid of those two lines, so we will stop our server, restart it, and at this point, we're gonna get very similar looking text and the same status code back. So that's not, uh, it's, it's not easy to tell that there's a difference. So maybe we'll put a two here at the end just to make sure we can see it. I need to stop the server, restart it. And you'll see it says page not found too. So it's clearly doing the new version. So I'll get rid of that. And then the last thing I want to show you here, which you don't have to do, but it's something to maybe keep in mind for the future, is that you can see here status not found. Well, this not found is a string that is associated with this status code. So if you ever want to take a status code, like 404 or this constant and get a string for it, there's actually something in the HTTP package called HTTP.statusText, which you pass in a code like 404, or you could pass in HTTP.statusNotFound and it will actually return um, the status text associated with that code. In this case, it's just gonna return not found. So it's actually gonna be a worse error message than what we had, and I'll show you that. So it's there. Um, we could use that if we wanted. I'm personally just gonna go ahead and use my own custom page not found. Um, and then down the road, a lot of times people will put a, a little bit nicer error message here, something like, you know, the page you were looking for couldn't be found. Um, sometimes you'll find some really creative ones on the web, depending on where you're going. So some people take this as a chance to sort of express their creativity with their website. In our case, we're gonna keep it pretty simple, but it is worth having a page not found message of some sort, and then we might improve it a little bit later in the course. So that should be it for our page not found. Um, we could also break this into a handler of some sort, but I, since this is a one-liner, I think it's fine to leave as is.